Wow. I feel like I've spent my whole career talking about memory making moments. And uh, senior day for me is the toughest day of the year. It always has been and probably always will be till I'm done. But last night I laid there and I called my equipment man, Dave Pruder. And I said, don't tell anybody, but if we get way ahead or way behind, I'm putting Aaron in and it's going to be his one shining moment. And uh, when I was able to do that, just felt like all that's good about my job. A lot of times there's a lot of things that aren't as good. But uh, I learned a lot about this team so far this year. Um, three weeks ago or whatever time we played Nebraska, I opened up the White Elephant. I admitted it to you, put the pressure on them. I uh, put it on myself, and they responded. And as I told them just now, the greatest memory-making moment will be for the next 60 years, you're going to understand uh, when your back's against the wall, your neck's on the line, you can do one of two things. You know, you can give up or you can grind. And uh, we grinded, if that's such a word. And uh, I'm very proud of them for that. Um, there were a lot of things we did well. We made some mistakes. Wisconsin's a veteran team. They're a good team. They're struggling a little bit <coughs> for whatever reasons. That is a very good basketball team. Koenig is an unbelievable player. He just seems like when things are on the line, he makes shot after shot after shot. But I thought we did such a good job you know, defensively, even though they shot 43% and 27 from the three, or 47 from the three, I guess, 27. Um, we were worried about the rebounding. We out-rebounded them. We were about worried about the offensive rebounds. They did have 15 and scored some points. For us, 11 turnovers is um, awesome. And, uh, you know, we had so many guys like Cassius Winston, you know, not only what he did, but I was in a huddle a couple of times. <coughs> I told my assistant I wanted to put him on uh, Koenig, and I told Cassius after, you ever thought that day would come? And we laughed, and Nick Ward after... Great start offensively and a poor start defensively. Bounce back. And Miles was a rock. He had a lot of things to do. And uh, and Josh made some plays. And so uh, getting McQuaid to bounce back and be somewhat the player that we all knew he could be and we saw last year was big. And uh, all in all, this team, 10 and 6 right now, with a chance to win some more games. Um, I think is is awesome for them, and it'll be a memory maker for me. So will today. Question. Tom, it took 16 games into the Big Ten schedule, but you won from the line, 91%, 21 to 23. Uh, bench points, 30 to 10. I mean, it, those kind of stats peaking in game 16 have to be extremely exciting for you. You know, they really are. Um, they really, really are. I... Uh, there were just a lot of things we did well, you know, and we did. They're not an easy team to cover. They're very physical. Um, and the experience those guys have down in that block. And every time we kind of tried to double down, which we were trying to do a little bit of, they hit a three. Uh, they, I think they they did some things, give Greg credit, uh, where they were looked awful against double teams <coughs> a couple weeks ago. The last couple games, you know, they've struggled a little bit, but they've made some adjustments. And uh, the way they moved Hayes around, it was harder to double. And uh, I just thought we left guys on an island down there, and they, they did their job. But, you know, we needed a good game in a lot of areas, and we got a good game in a lot of areas. You know, rebounding, defense, turnovers, you know, assists, 18 assists. Um, we just did a lot of good things, and I couldn't be prouder of my guys. Tom, at the, the closing remarks there, you, you brought up the 19 years in the streak, and you said the elephant in the room. That would, that, can you speak to the significance of that streak to you and that consistency over time and what it means to continue that against You know, who knows what will happen. I mean, I have no – I don't – I'm not sure I'll feel comfortable on anything until things happen. But we put ourselves in a position that I, I can look in a mirror and say we deserved 
some things. <clears throat> and the significance is what you just said. Um, when you can be consistent year after year after year, because nobody's kidding anybody, guys. I mean, I haven't been able to say it, but we have a shell of our team. I mean, you know it, I know it. It's been hell on those freshmen. It's been hard on, on us. Um, and we handled it. We, we've handled it. We've survived it. That doesn't mean we're done yet. Doesn't mean that we can't accomplish some things yet. Doesn't mean that we're over the hump. It just means that we learned how to deal with, with some pressure. And uh, I learned a lot from them, you know. I told you, this is a learning year for me, too. I admit it, I've never gone through anything like this. And uh, I'm proud. That's the best word I can give. Proud of the consistency. And uh, what happens from here, who knows? We still got some games to win. Coach, kind of building on that point you just made, there was a stretch where Miles got his third foul, Nick had his third foul. They're both on the bench. Your lead goes from 4 to 10 during that stretch. How critical was that? And what was your thought process as to when you felt you needed to get Miles and Nick back in and when you thought you could? Well, I thought I needed to get Miles in when I took him out. But uh, give Kyle Arns, he hits that big fast break three and Cash has pushed the ball so well. And, you know, it's – and and don't fool yourself. Tom did some good things too. I mean, he guarded that kid most of the night. That was – you know, it was unbelievable what he did, too. So we had a lot of guys that did a lot of things. It was hard to get Elvin in foul trouble. And and uh, Josh in that first half, we were playing with two small guards. They were playing big at times. Um, I don't know. I just – I was going to hold Miles there as long as that lead, you know, didn't get down too much. And then when it got down to, what, six or seven, <clears throat> I got a little nervous. I thought my – my chance to get Aaron in was slipping. My chance to win a game might have been slipping. And put him back in. He made some big free throws. Uh, got a couple big rebounds. And we found a way to win the game. Coach, when Nick was on the court, can you talk about how effective he was? Oh, you know, Nick is a load down there. And he's – Nick's going to be such a good player when – he's got such a long way to go and he's going to be such a good player, if that makes any sense at all. He's – He's gotten better. He's so much more coachable. He understands things. He's, he can take it now. He understands that we all are in this together and that we're trying to make him better. And I just love the way he responded. You know, that's one thing I will say about this team. Hey, I'm not the easiest guy to play for. Everybody knows. Great. It's not the easiest to play at a system where you've gone 19 straight times to the NCAA tournament and it's slipping away and there's pressure on. Those things are harder than all you guys th think or know. And uh, Nick Ward was one of the guys that, after that Michigan game, benched him, and he stepped up. He's been consistently a much better player since. He has some, still some lags in his defense at times, stepping up on those ball screens. But at least I know that it matters to him now. And uh, really proud of him and what he's done. And hopefully uh, the best for him is yet to come, too. When Ward wasn't in the game and Kenny battling Ethan Happ, you know, some that won't show up in the in the box score, obviously, but Happ goes four for ten from the field and only scores eight points. Talk about the job that he did. Well, Kenny did. You know, we were on Kenny, too, because it seemed like he was getting pushed around there and DJ was on him and I was on him and everybody was on him. But, you know, another guy that withstood it, you know. And that's what you should do. If you're getting beat, you should – you should get ticked off. And, you know, sometimes it takes me or DJ to get ticked off to get him ticked off. And when he gets ticked off himself, he'll become a lot better player. So that's all part of the growing process that we're working on. But Kenny Goins did a good job, um, you know, to get <coughs> four players in doubles. I, I, don't, I don't think I've talked enough about McQuaid. I mean, he made some big, 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 big plays and some pretty good defensive plays. And, he took a giant step tonight, and, and so did you know. I mean, Langford it just foul trouble hurt him, but uh, man, I had a lot of guys that played good guys, a lot of guys. Tom, seventy-eight points back in the back here. Uh, seventy-eight points of the eighty-four by freshmen and sophomores. It's somewhat fitting that 
on senior night, it's, it's those guys because of this team and how this team is constructed, not to take anything away from, from your seniors. but Well, I felt a little bad for Elvin because uh, he's been playing so good and shooting so good, but he just wasn't in the game that much. He was in constant foul trouble. and uh, But, yeah, that's I didn't realize that. So uh, good thing for the freshman. Just to double back to Nick for a second, um, you know, beyond him, kind of answering the call after being benched. Is this team kind of relearning a little bit to how to play with him and Miles out there together? And what, you know, what kind of emphasis is on post entries right now? Great point. I mean, you know, everybody thinks too that people come back and all of a sudden you can play with them. And I mean, Miles, it's, you know, Miles is starting. I mean, Miles is just starting to come. Uh, what I mean by that is we've been working harder on him, ripping the ball, getting to the basket, getting fouled. He gets nine free throws tonight. Nick goes four for four from the line. You all know we lost games early because Nick couldn't shoot a free throw and save his life, you know, and uh, he's worked on it. I mean, all these things are life lessons. Um, that's what I really get excited about for these guys. It's <clears throat> they're going to realize, whether it be in basketball or life, if you put your nose to the grindstone and you get some things done, um, what you put in is what you get out. Nick Ward has spent, give Dwayne Stevens and him a lot of credit. He spent a lot of time on those free throws and uh, made some big time plays. If I get Nick to play a little better defensively on those ball screens, he's going to be a hell of a player. Yeah. Getting back to McQuaid just for a second. Did you, did you sense this at all in practice? Mm -hmm. making, making a Last two weeks. He's been practicing better. He's been making more shots. Uh, uh, it's been fun to watch, too, because the players, the players, if you guys interview any of them, they, they've they been pulling, like like I told you, uh, Miles. Just He gets so excited when, when he hits a shot, when uh, Matt McQuaid hits a shot, because um, they all know how good he can shoot, and they all know the slump he's been in. But his defense was better. He rebounded. I don't know how many he got tonight. Um, Probably couldn't get as many. He only got two because Winston hogged all the rebounds. Um, that enormous body of his, he was get seven rebounds, so that's pretty good too. But uh, I, I think McQuaid is uh, – he just kept working at it, you know. Um, and never stopped coming in, never stopped watching film. Um, this will be a great lesson for maybe fans, but they won't understand it. But players that are in the system, and believe it or not, for coaches like me <coughs> – Learned a lot from these guys so far, and and now we got to figure out a way to enjoy it tonight, and then tomorrow start working on Illinois because they're they're playing very well. They they've won some big games lately. They're they're tough at home, um, and uh, we just got to keep getting better. Win, lose, or draw, we got to keep getting better. And I think we will. One final one in the back, coach back here. You talked about wanting to get Aaron in. Um, in those closing seconds, everything goes silent after the ball is inbounded. Is that the first time you've asked somebody to travel for you, McQuaid there? Yeah, ticks me off, too, because of the turnovers, you know. I was trying to keep those turnovers down. I just I didn't know any other way to get him in, keep him by me so he wouldn't get hurt and still give him a chance to kiss the head, you know, and uh, it worked. I mean, thank God for the officials. Thank God. Wisconsin was okay with it, and uh, I think it was a big deal to Aaron, and it was only me and Pruder knew about it, and uh, we made him dress, and uh, one of the great moments in my Michigan State career was, was that moment. Thanks. He got it!